Hello everyone, welcome back to Oz with Solomon. I am Dandy the Artsy Rose, your hostess, and we shall proceed with chapter 8, I believe. Yes, last I checked, we had... Yes, Solomon was just about to explain how he became the wizard. The wizard of the north. He's the wizard of the north. Or was it west? I don't even remember anymore. I'm sorry. Solomon Main Story, Chapter 8, The Cost He Paid After leaving the Winkies, we arrived next to the Grand Old Forest. I love this color. I was reading about color blindness yesterday, and I'm just wondering if this is what a cat would see. There's supposed to be various kinds of color blindness, but I don't know. Hmm. You know, Leonardo used to be a lion. I wonder if he's colorblind. I wonder if he's still colorblind, but since he had been, since he had originally been a lion. Are lions colorblind? I know they're big cats and they're in the cat family, but it's just a little, just a little something I wonder. This forest is my kingdom. Let me show you around. Are you colorblind? Please do. Say, if I might have a word. What about Crowley? No, he was a scarecrow. I don't think he's colorblind. Crowley said as he pointed forward. There seems to be a big herd of something drawing closer to us. Ah, th th that's... What are they, flying monkeys? Running towards us, sending their footprints. Sending their footprints echoing throughout the forest was a herd of b animals, big and small. Ah! A lion? A giraffe? An elephant? Rabbits and raccoons? Zebras and squirrels? Ah, I can't count them all! What's with these guys? The animals surrounded us. Their claymore even louder and more deafening. Now, I loved animals, but not a crowd like this screaming in my ear. What do I do? Um... Well, naturally, Leonardo's the king. Ah! I clicked in Leonardo's back. What's the matter, Rhoda? Help, Leonardo! Hmm? I've never been surrounded by a crowd of animals like this before. When I said that, Leonardo just laughed it off. <laughs> There's nothing to worry about. But, but I really didn't think I could get out of this without worrying. These guys are all just a little excited. With a wink in my direction, Leonardo turned back to face the crowd. Hey, everyone! Come on! Come on! Calm down! Rhoda's scared stiff! Leonardo's bellow, in bellow instantly rendered the animals quiet. Whoa. Well, Leonardo's the king of this forest. Well, Lord Solomon barely graces us here with his presence in this forest, you see. Since everything, since something so rare happened, since something so rare happened, they all wanted to give us a passionate welcome. Right, you guys? They all nodded eagerly to Sol at Leonardo's call. Welcome to our forest, Lord Solomon. And Lady Rhoda, too. It's truly an honor to be able to welcome the both of you to this forest. The animals bowed their heads to Solomon and I with polite words. What? Me too? Well, of course, Dorothy. You're basically the hero. I know why Solomon would be welcomed so warmly, but why me too? It was Solomon who cleared up my doubt. Rhoda, since you're the hero who saved the Land of Oz before, they're all very grateful to you. They're grateful to me? Even though he came out and said it, I couldn't exactly feel it. We were told that you would visit our humble forest by King Leonardo, and have been waiting eagerly since then. We have prepared a welcoming feast for you. Please, come join us. I am very, I am truly grateful for the offer, but could we do that later? Oh, why, my lord? I must take care of the business I came to this forest for, Ruth Rhoda. Business? What could that be? He didn't tell me anything. Leonardo spoke up to see the disappointed animal. Follow Lord Leonardo's orders. Don't worry, he'll join the feast when he's done. So what are we having, berries? You don't mind, right? Lord Solomon? Leonardo. Lord Solomon nodded to Leonardo. Well, let us get going before it gets too late. Please, hold on for a moment. Hold on for a moment. A tiger at the head of the animals took a step toward me. Before your departure, as a token of our acquaintance, I would like to request a hug from you, Lady Rhoda. A hug? The tiger looked at me with eyes full of anticipation. What do I do? I looked at Solomon from the side of my eye. What's the matter, Rhoda? Come, the tiger is waiting. Solomon smiled and gave me an encouraging push. Well, well, of course. Hug the bloody tiger. Well, 
Solomon seems to want me to do it, so I probably don't need to worry. I took a step forward and smiled at the tiger. Sure, I'll gladly hug you. Thank you, Lady Rhoda. The tiger's muscular forearms wrapped around my back. Uh, uh, he's just as strong as he looks! It was a little tight, but I managed to hug him back with a smile still on my face. What an honor! I now wish to, I now, I now wish to roar in joy. <laughs> he pulled away from me and roared in the sky, into the sky. Roar! God, my ears! When I froze up in just, when I froze up in surprise, Solomon gently put his arms around my shoulder. Wasn't it nice how happy you made him? Yeah, good thing I didn't refuse that hug. Oh, I'm not anticipating this going through this again. Because the other choices suck! <laughs> oh. Poor tiger. Wait. <laughs> oh no, now what happened? <sighs> now I'm itchy all of a sudden. <laughs> Parted with the animals, we headed deep into the forest. Come to think of it. Are we? Yep, we're rolling. Solomon said he had business here, but just what did he mean? Hey, Solomon. Yes, what is it? You were talking about having business in this forest, right? We arrived. We've, al we've arrived, Lord Solomon. Leonardo's voice interrupted my question. This looming over the grand old forest is the great guardian tree. The Great Guardian Tree? Looks like something that came out of Final Fantasy s No, not Final Fantasy VI. Final Fantasy X. Although the lights, the little wisps that are dancing around it, it would be blue if, they were, if this were Final Fantasy. The Great Guardian Tree? There was a massive tree towering over us. What a great tree. What a huge tree. Its trunk looked so big that it would take a large group of people just to form a ring around it. It also boasted it also boosted countless branches covered in green. The tree, looking to be thousands of years old, was looking down on us, as if it were a giant living creature. I've heard the rumors, but I'd imagined it to be so fine a tree. Oz said moved. Well, it is the great guardian, after all. It feels like I am in consort with a god. Consort with a god. Crowley said in awe. When I took a glance at Solomon next to me, I saw that he was silently looking up at the great guardian tree. Just what are we going to do in front of the great guardian tree, Rhoda? Then to my surprise, Solomon moved my way. Yes? As I all but leaped in surprise, Solomon gently pushed my back. What? I was made to stand up. Stand right in front of the ancient tree. What we are about to do is conduct something of a sacred ritual. And something that only you can do. A ritual? We're going to have the great guardian tree tell you the path you should take. Leonardo told me in Solomon's deed, this tree has lived tens, hundreds of times longer than any human. You could say it's the greatest elder in all the land. It will surely give you direction to the lost and certainty to be to the result. Di direction and certainty. So would this be considered a great elder tree? It looks like a great oak. Although I could be wrong. I need to do my homework. Is it just me or does that look like a face? I see a face. Is the tree really alive? Right now, which of those do I need? Both, really. But if you're wondering which one you need the most, that's something you have to decide for yourself, Dorothy. Come, Rada. Empty your heart, clear your ears, and listen to the great tree's words. Salmon gently put my palm to the tree's trunk. It's... It's warm. The trunk's surface felt warm. As if it were a living creature. I could feel something like vines pulsating on it from my palm. It's... it's 
like it's alive. Close your eyes, Rada. But I'm a little scared. I spoke how honestly I felt. It wasn't simple fear. It was more like awe. Don't worry. You won't be the only one listening to the Great Tree's words. I'll be here with you. Solomon laid his hands on the back of my hand. Solomon. I felt Solomon's gentle heart expressing itself through my hand. Are you still afraid? Solomon spoke, his eyes closed. No, not at all. I answered, with my eyes closed as well, and the next moment. The inside of my eyelids were, in an instant, covered in pure white light. Though the white was brighter than the afternoon sun, it did not hurt my eyes. It felt gentle and comforting. Eventually, I heard someone's voice from beyond the light. To thee, Rhoda, I speak. The voice sounded neither male or female, old nor old. Yes. I responded to my heart. Thine path lies in following thine heart. Follow, follow the dictates of thine heart. All as thine heart desires. As the voice faded away, the light flooding my vision disappeared as well. Follow my heart. When I got back to my senses, I found myself surrounded by Leonardo, Crowley, and the others. Everyone? Are you alright? Uh, she might be feeling a little woozy, but I think she'll manage. It looked like you fainted. We were really worried. You're all clear now, though, right? What did you hear? Well, when I tried to open my mouth, Solomon pushed his index finger against my lips. Against his lips. You mustn't tell others what you heard. He said to me, Come with me. We must keep this in our hearts. Uh, all right. Just how secretive can you get? If there is need, I'll tell you whatever you wish to know. But sometimes, one's resolve shows its true power when kept to oneself. A secret only between Solomon and I. Between only Solomon and I. When I thought of it like that, it felt a little bittersweet, but I didn't have an ounce of energy to enjoy that bittersweet secret with. I thought that the words of the great guardian tree had left me, left me with were too heavy to bear. It tells me to decide everything as my heart dictates, but that means that everything I did from head on, every choice I made, would be my responsibility. Will I really be able to pull off such a huge responsibility? I didn't even know what I wanted to do or should do in the first place, Rhoda. As if picking up on my anxiety, Solomon gently put his arm around my shoulder. I told you before, didn't I? You needn't worry.